Chapter 11, Geologic Time. Okay, there are several paradigms or schools of thought that have been, um, been the primary paradigm for geology over, over the centuries. And one of the um, primary paradigms just prior to modern day geology was catastrophism, where we believe that landscape developed by catastrophic events. James Usher in the mid-1600s concluded Earth was only a few thousand years old. Now, modern, today in modern geology, we have a paradigm or school of thought called uniformitarianism. This is the fundamental principle of geology, and the, um, I guess the uh, slogan is, the present is the key to the past. So the processes that occur today have always occurred in the same manner and the same, same rate. Take, the amount of time it takes is the same. James Hutton, he's the, he wrote The Theory of the Earth, which was published in the late 1700s, and he laid the groundwork for uniformitarianism. Okay, now relative dating. This is how we can figure out how old one rock is versus another rock. By placing rocks and events in sequence, we have relative dating. The, principle, the principles and rules of relative dating include, one, the law of superposition. The oldest rocks are on the bottom. Okay. Also, the principle of, horizon, of original horizontality, sediment is deposited horizontally. So the older sediments are on the bottom, and then the newer sediments, the newer sediments. And the older sediments eventually um, become lithified into rock, and then the next oldest layer of sediments get lithified into the next layer of slightly newer rock, kind of like a layer cake approach. And then the principle of cross-cutting relationships. Younger features may cut through an older feature. Not the other way around. Older features do not cut through younger features. Okay, so in the Grand Canyon, we can uh, see where the lost super superposition is very well illustrated. Okay, so we have our older um, siltstones and shales are down here at the bottom. Then we have our hermit shale and our volcano sandstone. Okay, so as we go up, these layers get younger and younger. Okay, and these layers are all horizontal. Okay. Now here we have an example of cross-cutting relationships. Okay? So here we have our horizontal beds of various layers of rock, but then we have these dikes that cut across, and we have these faults. Okay? This dike here cuts across this fault, so this dike is younger than the fault. This batholith is cutting across these rock layers, so they're younger than the rocks. It cuts across that fault, so the batholith is younger than that fault, but the dike cuts across the batholith, so the dike B is younger than the batholith, which is younger than the fault, which is younger than the rocks behind it. Okay. Inclusions. One rock contained within another rock. Okay, the rock containing the inclusion is younger. So the surrounding rock, surrounding a, another rock, is the younger rock. Okay. Unconformities. These happen when there's a break in the rock layer. Okay, so this is where, where some of the rocks were eroded away. So, so the newer rocks on top um, leave a gap in time. Okay. An angular unconformity, tilted rocks are overlain by flat-lying rocks. And a disconformity, strata on either side are parallel. Okay, so here's a formation of an angular unconformity. Here we have our horizontal layers from oldest to youngest, and we have some uplift. Okay, here we got like anticline forming. And then we have the, the uplifted land, the rock is being eroded away, okay? And then after time, let's say a new ocean basin forms here, okay? And we have um, sediments horizontally laying on top. So here we have uplifted rock with horizontal rock on top with a break in time. So this is an angular unconformity. Okay. Other types of unconformities, a nonconformity, Metamorphic or igneous rocks are below, and then the younger rocks are sedimentary. Okay, so here with a nonconformity where we have some nice uh, uh, metamorphic rocks and igneous rocks, and then there's this break in time. That's a nonconformity. Here we have some deformed rocks. They're tilted. Okay, with horizontal rocks on top. So here we got angular conformity. Correlation of rock layers. Matching rocks of similar age in different regions. Often we rely on fossils to help us match up these rocks. Fossils are the remains or traces of prehistoric life. Different types of fossils. Uh, one is petrified. Cavities and pores are filled with precipitated mineral matter. Or we might have them formed by replacement. 
Okay, cell material is removed and replaced with mineral matter. The mold, the shell or other structure is buried and then is dissolved by, by underground water, leaving, leaving a, a mold. A cast, a hollow space of a mold is filled with mineral matter. Carbonization, organic matter becomes a thin residue of carbon, so some sort of fossils look dark uh, from this carbonization. Impression is a replica of the fossil surface preserved in fine grained sediment. Then preservation, preservation in amber, the hardened resident, resin of ancient trees surrounding an organism. You might get a chunk of amber and, and see like a, a, a prehistoric mosquito in there. Okay, so here is a cast of mold of a trilobite. Trilobite's like my favorite fossil, one of the first creatures, invertebrates on earth I could see in 3D. It's like these nice eyes that help, had overlapping fields of vision, giving some 3D. But uh, here's the, the mold, and on this side this is the cast. Oh, I'm sorry, reverse that. Here's the mold, okay, and here's the cast. Indirect evidence includes tracks, burrows, corpolites, and gastroliths. So track is a pathway a, a creature may have taken, seeing its footprints. And burrows are, are um, the homes of a burrowing uh, critter may be preserved. Corpolites are fossil dung and stomach contents. And gastroliths are stomach stones used to grind food by some extinct reptiles. Now, what conditions favor preservation of these things? Well, rapid burial, nice mudslide, sediment being laid down really fast, and then um, possession of hard parts. The, the creatures on uh, invertebrates in the past that have hard parts or shells uh, or later on bones, and all those, those are easier to preserve than, than the soft features. Okay. Now, fossils in correlation. We have another rule here, the principle of fossil succession. Fossils succeed one and another in definite and determined order. This is proposed by William Smith in the late 1700s, early 1800s. Okay? So what this means is that certain fossils only live during a certain time period. So once, um, so here's the trilobite, this older one, and then we have the scallops that started sometime during the trilobite's uh, age range, okay, and continued to modern times. Then we didn't have ferns, let's say, until sometime after scallops started. Now here's a little time period with dinosaurs, okay? And up here we didn't have maple leaves until a certain time period, okay? So by knowing which fossils were around during certain time periods can help us correlate which rocks were of the same age. Okay, so what we need is index fossils. Index fossils are those that are widespread geographically but existed for a short range of time. So we can find them all over the world, but we know a very short period of time where they lived, and that helps dramatically with correlating uh, rock layers. Okay. Now, another, another other tools we use are radio, we use radioactivity and radiometric dating. Okay, so atomic structure is reviewed. So, so to review our atomic structure, a nucleus of an atom incl includes its protons, which are positively charged, and our neutrons, which is neutrally charged and um, protons and electrons combine, okay? So orbiting the nucleus are the electrons, negative electrical charges, okay? Now the atomic number is the element's identifying number. It's the number of protons in its nucleus. The mass number is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons in its nucleus. An isotope is a variant of the same parent atom, different number of neutrons, and it has uh, a different mass number. Okay, so radioactivity, is a spontaneous break apart of decay of atomic nuclei. So some of those isotopes are not stable and they will break apart and decay, and that's radioactivity. Okay, so the parent is an unstable isotope, and the daughter products of the isotopes formed from the decay of a parent. Okay, so as um, re radioactive decay, there are several types of decay. There's alpha emission, beta emission, and electron capture. Okay, so with alpha emission, okay, we end up with a daughter particle and we emit an alpha particle. Okay. With beta emission, okay, our daughter product is the same as the parent, but it's minus an electron. Okay. Electron capture, we've added, okay, we've, okay, daughter, here's a daughter nucleus, and the atomic number is one less. Okay. Mass number is no change. So we've captured an electron here. Radiometric dating. Half-life, the time for one half of the radioactive nuclei to decay. 
This requires a closed system, otherwise we can't really measure the time if more is being inputted. Cross checks are used for accuracy, and it's a very complex procedure, and it yields numerical dates. Okay. So here's our radioactivity on curve. Here's our number of half-lives down here on this axis. Here's our percentage of, of radioactive isotope uh, remaining. So here we have 100%, this is uh, the parent, parent isotope. And then here, at this point, we have half of it left. At this point, we have 25 um, atoms of parent and 75 atoms of daughter, and 13 of the parent and 6. Okay, so that forms the curve here, this radioactive date delay curve, decay curve, sorry. Okay, so as we, we date our sedimentary strata using radiometric dating, Okay, so here we have our, these rocks came out with dates of um, 160 uh, million, million years or older here. So these are rocks of Jurassic age. Okay, up here these are Cretaceous rocks here. And here's our tertiary rocks. Okay, so radiometric dating gave us dates that we can place into these age ranges. And this, um, and this dike dates at 66 uh, million years ago. Okay, so it's cutting across rocks that are older. Okay. Carbon-14 dating. Well, a half-life has a half-life of only 5,730 years. It's used to date very recent events. Carbon-14 is produced in the upper atmosphere and is incorporated into carbon dioxide and is absorbed by living matter. It's very useful for anthropologists and archaeologists, historians, and geologists who study very recent Earth's history. Okay, so the geologic time scale, we divide this history into geologic units, you know, geologic time units, and it was originally created using relative dates. Okay, so the major subdivisions, the eon is the greatest expanse of time. We have four eons. We have the Phanerozoic, which is a time period where there's visible life. That's our most recent eon, the Proterozoic before that, and then the um, Archaeon and the Hadean. Hadean is the oldest eon. And then we break the eons into eras, and these eras are subdivisions of the eon. So the eras of the Phanerozoic, we have our Cenozoic, which is recent life, and our Mesozoic is our middle life, and our Paleozoic is ancient life. Eras are then subdivided into periods, and periods are subdivided into epochs. Okay, so here, here we have our geologic time scale. Here we have our Phanerozoic, okay, and here we have our pre-Cambrian. Um, okay. So let's see, hold on. So this area here fits right in amongst, let's see, amongst here. So we have our, so this is expanding this out for us. So we see the Cenozoic as our quaternary, okay? And we're currently in the Holocene, and before the Holocene was the Pleistocene. So here's our era, and our period, and our epoch, okay? Back down here on the Mesozoic, the Cretaceous, Jurassic, and Triassic, okay? You've heard of those, with dinosaurs. And the Paleozoic, the Permian, um, the Carboniferous period, the Devonian, the Silurian, Ordovician, and Cambrian. And before, before we have all fossils, we have the Precambrian eon. Okay. Not all rocks are datable. Sedimentary ages are rarely reliable. Materials are often used to bracket events and arrive at ages. 